Good morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach. I'm an elder here and we're delighted that you could join us for yet another virtual worship service. Believe it or not, we're entering our sixth month of online services. And thanks to Jim Leach and Brad Keller, Lynn Orianez, Barbara Stanton, Maylene and Doreen Sineas, and several others, we're able to bring these services to you. Grace may be a small group of believers, but we have a big faith, a faith that God will soon have a, the COVID virus behind us and that we'll be blessed and be able to celebrate God and worship him in person again soon. And we welcome Reverend Raymond Anglin today to lead our worship service. So join me please in the call to worship. It's taken from Psalm 114. In the presence of God, the sea shall flee. The mountains shall skip like rams and the hills like lambs. We are bold to approach you and call you our God. We come into your presence with singing and into your courts with praise. Let us worship God. Brad is now going to play and sing number 682, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Brad. rises to your honor. The mountains owe their grandeur to your design for creation. The seas have their depth, as you have decreed. We blend our voices with all of your creatures and join with your people in praising your name. Amen. And now it's time for the prayers of the people. Thank you so much for sending in your prayer requests. It makes our prayer time that much more meaningful. You can text me or email me or just pick up the phone and call me and I'll add them to this, the Sunday prayers. Please join me. Oh God, you are so faithful to us. You have brought us through trials before, just as you are doing it today. You have tried us and we have remained faithful. We can rejoice now knowing you will deliver us yet again. Be happy, don't worry, you say, and so we can. We continue to offer prayers of healing and courage for Jeff and Valerie Hester, the Bahari family, Jerry Kidder, and Keith Forbes. We offer prayers of thanksgiving and praise for healing for our friend Donna Williamson and Reverend Roger Richardson. Your strength and guidance is needed for our students returning to school, Emily, Ashley, Aiden, Maylene, Doreen, and members of our Boy Scout Troop 215. For all of our teachers, and for Jimmy, Jim, Debbie, and Brad specifically, 
We ask that you give us grace to bring joy and companionship to all those who can't get out due to the COVID virus. To Carolyn and Nett, we offer prayers of fellowship and virtual hugs and smiles. We ask for protection for those that protect and serve us, healthcare providers, firemen, policemen, and our dedicated soldiers and sailors, both home and abroad. O oh Lord, let our hearts grow with the Holy Spirit to allow us to not only get by, but to get up and help others. Let people see you in us, we pray. In your name we pray, amen. And now please join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now read the prayer of confession. We are mindful that each time we come into your presence, how willing you are to forgive seventy times seven. Yet when people betray us, we bear grudges and think ill of them. We are quick to anger when we feel we've been wrong. We do not hasten to seek reconciliation, even when we would rather things were less stressful and tense. Forgive us when we hesitate to emulate your example, and help us to seek the peace Christ taught us to practice. Amen. Let us receive the assurance of pardon. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. I'll now read our affirmation of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, we trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
it's time for our tithes and offerings. People of Grace, friends of Grace, you've been so generous. Our new need for a new well here at the church, you've come and stepped up and provided new donations. It's a big, a big bill to dig a well. It's $9,000. If you've recently been blessed and you'd like to share that blessing with Grace, please send in your donation to 14, excuse me, 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. And may God bless you. Thank you so much for the beautiful music. We really enjoy and are, are blessed by your contributions each week. Please join me now in the prayer of dedication. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He hastens his will to make known. We do gather before you, O God, and ask that you will bless the fruits of our labor. Hasten to make your will known among us so that all that we do shall be to your glory. Accept the gifts that we offer for the furtherance of your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
I'm Doreen Simmons and I'll be reading Exodus 14, verse 19 through 31. The angel of God who was going before them, the Israel army moved and went behind them. And the pilot of God moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went to the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egypt pursued and went into the sea after all the Pharaoh horses, the chariots and the chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egypt army and threw the Egypt army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they turned with difficulty. The Egypt said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out their hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egypt, upon the chariot and the chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned its normal depth. As the Egypt fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egypt into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on the dry ground through the sea, like waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egypt. And Israel saw the Egypt's dead on the seahorse. The Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord, in his servant Moses. Our New Testament reading comes to us from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. A reading from the New International Version. Accept him whose faith is weak, without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does. For God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands and falls, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced of his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat, it is written. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
It's a joy again for me to be with you, sharing as we continue our journey through these very challenging days. Cooped up, restrained, and relegated to our homes. But the good news is that this too will come to an end, we hope sooner than later. We continue our journey as pilgrims and be reminded of the experience of those who have gone before us. As our readings this morning in our lectionary remind us that like the Israelites of old, we too are pilgrims over this rigged pathway of ours, reminding ourselves that God is indeed with us. One of the writers commenting on our scripture readings in our lectionary this week shared with us an experience, a personal experience. She lives in the Lake Superior area and she says, a few hardy souls live year round on this island of Lake Superior. It is often ice bound in the northern hemisphere winter. When the ferry boat can no longer push through the thickening ice, residents pray for ice for, a, for an ice road. Usually, she says, County Road H is plowed to the mainland across the heights over water. Stepping or driving onto the ice road, when the GPS is crying out, warning, no road, turn back now, can be very unsettling, she states. But there are many reasons to cross the water over the ice for groceries, other supplies, family emergencies, all these make it necessary and he counts it a privilege to run over for freedom despite the risk. It seemed to me that this is a good place to start as we look at this passage in Exodus referred to as the crossing of the Red Sea, a very pivotal moment in the life of the children of Israel. And for us, as we look back, very pivotal for us as well, as we do have our Red Sea crossing experiences. You will recall quite well that God had confronted his servant Moses out there in the desert and out there in the theophany, in the midst of that theophany, as God encounters him and confronts him, he's called into a ministry, a mission, to go down and confront the pharaohs, to release the people of God out of Egyptian bondage. And you recall that in that moment, Moses and God engage in a conversation. And Moses asks God for his identity. And he responds, I am that I am. Tell Pharaoh that I have sent you. And of course, Moses is mesmerized by that answer. But in that moment, he becomes conscious that the one who is speaking to him is the one who has been, the one who is, and the one who always will be. Take that with you as your qualification to stand before the Pharaoh and speak on behalf of the people. Moses' mission continues as he engages with the Pharaohs, and you can really uh, remind yourselves of this in the chapters between chapter 13 through 14, 15 of Exodus. Here they are standing between the desert place and Egypt behind them, etched in by the water. The people begin to grumble. 
Why have you taken us out in the desert to die? Is it because there are no graves? And they are grumbling. And Moses is concerned and overwhelmed. He goes to God and speaks on behalf of the people. What should I say to them? And the words of Moses are very important to us in verse 13 of chapter 14. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, will ne you never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. I like to peg my thoughts on three hangers because it helps me to share with you and hopefully helps you to remember what I share from this text. First of all, this text speaks to the reality of God's presence. The reality of God's presence. God has been walking with God's people, moving out of Egyptian bondage to that place where God is leading them to. And like the analogy I began with, the same thing is true of the people. They are faced not with iced water, but a wide expanse of water referred to as the Red Sea, or the Yam Suf, or the Sea of Reeds. And out there in nowhere land, they are faced with this challenge, the sea ahead of them, and the Egyptian army behind them. And we are told in the scripture that God allowed the angel before to stop leading and to go behind as well as the cloud. And that created darkness for them in the front and the light behind. And this is a very important moment for the people, not knowing exactly what is unraveling. But they are conscious, as led by Moses, of the continuing presence of Yahweh, the continuing presence of their El Shaddai, their continuing presence of the God who is their God, and the God who has spoken to Moses and spoke, and spoke through Moses to them, stand still and see the salvation of your God, the reality of that living, dynamic, providing presence of their God. And I believe that this word is very timely for us. We who have been faced with this pandemic, which we can refer to as another of a Red Sea type experience, we don't know what is ahead. We are leaving behind us some stuff, very fearful caught in the moment and we are walking as it were over iced water the unknown and God is saying to Moses to the people stand still there in that uncertain place stand still there on a ground which seemed to be moving from under your feet and see what God is going to do and this word, I hope, reminds us of that presence, that divine presence, that God who is with us, who is saying to us, stand still, just be quiet, just pause, and be reminded of the past, ways in which you have experienced this presence of God. Sometimes we forget it's not in the noises, it's not in the earthquakes, it's not in the thunderstorms, but in those still moments in our rooms, in those quiet places or sacred places of devotion, when we hear and we feel the lift from that presence, the reality of God's presence. 
but also speaks to the reassurance that comes from God's promises. When Moses spoke those words, stand still and see the salvation of your God. He was speaking to a people who heard time and time again through the prophets and through the spokespersons of this divine one. I am there. I will not leave you. Neither will I forsake you. I am going to be there through thick and through thin. When the forces rage and when they are quieted, I promise to be there with you. You can be reassured of that promise. And that comes again to the people here through Moses. The angel of God leading them, reminding them that God is with them. The angel of God and the cloud, visible cloud presence of God reminding them that this God has spoken and this God's word stands firm. Stand firm and see and I will be there for you. For the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will bring you deliverance this day. Just wait and see. What reassurance it is for us in our time, in our day, as we are hedged in. Maybe some of us are faltering in our faith, maybe asking questions, why? Why us at this time? How much longer can we endure this? Is there light at the end of the tunnel? The word comes as reassurance. I will be there to fight for you. You need only to be still. The reality of God's presence, the reassurance from God's promises. But then there is for them to see the resplendent display of God's power. Here they are edged in the sea the white sea red sea ahead of them and the water outspread threatening their existence and the rumblings and the sounds of the chariots and the horsemen led by the armies of Pharaoh coming to overcome them those of us who are students of the scripture will be reminded that that place at which they were hedged in at the Red Sea was a place which was given to volcanoes or earthquakes. So there are two approaches to this interpretation. There's a literal where we can see the forces of gravity being contravened as God's power is unleashed on display, as water, liquid water, is hedged up on both sides. That's one interpretation, literally, and they walk through. But there's also the other interpretation of a God who continues to, un to reveal his power in nature. In that area, given to earthquakes, just at the time when the people of Israel needed to be delivered, that God, the Almighty, Creator, the one who sustains this universe, allowed at that given moment for an earthquake, for the land to rise up and the waters to recede, allowing them to walk through. It doesn't matter which interpretation you take, the literal or the other. What is important is the miracle is not so much the event, but that when the children needed the help of the Father, God so provided the deliverance in this volcanic earthquake action 
to allow the waters to be receded as land raised high and they walked through. And as they walked through, led by the angel and the pillar of light, cloud behind them, preventing the Egyptians to catch them. And when they were all through, all of what God did acted again and waters overcame the land and covered the Egyptians, their enemies. In the same way, our God continues to lead, reminding us of his presence. Our God continues to reassure of his promises to be there to walk with us through, thick and through thin. And as we are going through, we experience on a continuing basis the resplendent display of God's power in our lives, beginning with the little day-to-day -day miracles in our homes, in our families, in our groups, when God comes at the right time. Not necessarily when we want him to come, but God comes when he knows we need him and provides that door of escape, provides that exit that allows us to rise above our immediate circumstances that keep us captive and hold us in bondage. So my brothers and my sisters at Grace, as we share again today, let's know that the God whom we worship, the God whose reverence we seek, he hangs in there with us. So he leadeth me, O oh blessed thought. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. Let that be our prayer as we go through this another week, knowing that God, through his grace, leadeth all of us. Amen. Our gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to be in this place, to hear as you speak, reminding us through the voice of Moses, Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Help us as we make ready to start a new week, to go forth being reminded of your presence, to go forth being reminded of your promises, to go forth being reminded of your power, because you are with us, victory is guaranteed. May we believe this and go forth with that confidence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way Oh, my. 
my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And so we rise again to go back from whence we came into those spaces in our lives and those places this week, knowing that our God is with us. And because God is with us, all will be well. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now and stay, steadfast, strong and true. Know he will guide you and all you do.